Chapter 31. You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation The group of people chatted casually outside Sunshine Plaza. Suddenly, President Huang jerked. His hands were between his legs and he looked agonized. Itchy, itchy. He could not stop yelling while he danced around. Lu Dajuan and the other people were thrilled when they saw that. Some of them even took out their phones to snap photos. Quick, in the car. Tang Hao said. President Huang walked in an awkward, twisting way, then dove into his car. Twenty minutes later, Tang Hao peeked into his car and he nearly burst out laughing. President Huang originally had a bald spot on his head. Now the hair on his head was long and dense. The ring of hair around the bald spot had become even longer. It was a comical sight. Nose hair shot out from his nostrils. They were about three to four centimeters long. His pants were bulging. The hair was unnaturally dense down there. Unexpected to Tang Hao, President Huang was not as panicked as he seemed. Rather, he used his phone as a mirror to look at himself happily. Look at this, Lil Tang. It's growing. What are you so happy about? Did you expect Lil Tang's potion to not work? Go go go, let's get it shaved off. We still have mansions to view. Lu Dajuan shouted. President Huang got out of his car, then they huddled together and walked to the barbershop. President Huang's ridiculous look still attracted a lot of attention while walking along the street. Many people had weird looks on their faces when they saw him, and some even burst out in laughter. Everyone in the barbershop was shocked when they saw the group of people come in. They looked at President Huang from head to toe and fixed their eyes on his bulging pants. Damn. Look at the size of that thing. A middle-aged woman shrieked in surprise. Her eyes were bulging and round. President Huang's face turned red immediately. What's there to look at? My brother here has an innate condition that causes his hair to grow all over his body. Someone come help him shave all this off. Lu Dajuan stepped forward and threw a hundred yuan note at the counter. After some hard work, they finally shaved all the extra hair away. As for the hair in his pants, President Huang shaved it off himself in the toilet. After the incident, they all set off. Tang Hao rode on his little three-wheeled motorcycle, while a fleet of luxury cars followed behind. It was an incredibly cool scene that attracted a lot of attention. In 20-something minutes, the fleet arrived at Celestial Foothill. The mansions were all located in this area. Lu Dajuan only had to show his face for the security guards in the area to immediately let them into Celestial Foothill Gardens. The area boasted an enchanting view of mountains and lakes. Tang Hao fell in love with the place. Each of the mansions had different designs and were furnished according to its building style. After looking at all the offerings, Tang Hao picked one with a modern building style. It was also equipped with a swimming pool and garden. After making his choice, Lu Dajuan brought Tang Hao to get the paperwork done. To celebrate his recent mansion purchase, Lu Dajuan and the rest decided to convene at Beyond Heaven's restaurant later in the evening to have dinner. After parting ways with the group, Tang Hao returned to the delivery store. Tang Hao had mentioned to Uncle Li about his resignation a few days ago. No one had showed up to replace him yet, so he stayed on his post. Uncle Li came out of the store. Lil Tang, someone came looking for a job earlier. He used to be a delivery boy so he can pick up the job incredibly fast. He should be able to substitute your job immediately. I've asked him to come to work tomorrow. Tang Hao was surprised when he heard this news. He did not expect this day to come so fast and felt a little reluctant to leave. He had worked there for a little more than a year and Uncle Li was a caring employer who had helped him during his most difficult period. Uncle Li, I, he felt a little sad. Eh? Why are you feeling sad about, kid? It's a good thing that you've found a benefactor to help you. At least you'll have a bright future. It's way better than delivering packages. Uncle Lee smiled. I am so happy for you. If you're free next time, feel free to drop by. Remember to bring me some fine alcohol. Tang Hao a lump in his throat. 
he wanted to cry. Holding back his tears, he nodded. And this will be your last batch of packages. Go get them delivered. Uncle Lee pointed at a pile of packages at the side. Yup. Tang Hao replied. He rode onto his little three-wheeled motorcycle and drove toward Azure Sky Gardens. Tang Hao had done this job repeatedly for the past few hundred days. It was as menial as it could get, but today he felt heaviness in his heart. After delivering the last package, Tang Hao rode aimlessly on the wide road with his little three-wheeled motorcycle. Without this job, he felt vacant inside. He had to somehow get used to this. In the evening, he went to Beyond Heaven Restaurant. Everyone ate and drank merrily at the banquet. Halfway through, President Huang excused himself to pick up a call. When he returned, his face was grim. What's wrong, President Huang? You look ghastly. Is there an incident? Everyone looked at him curiously. President Huang was silent for a while, then said, It's Secretary Lin's son. He met with an accident and is currently in the ICU at the hospital. Things aren't looking great. What? Lu Dajuan and the others were shocked. Who's Secretary Lin? Tang Hao was confused. He's the Secretary Lin that always appears on television. He's one of the top dot ranking officials in the district. I've met his son a few times. He's a good kid. Also, Ol Huang is distant relatives with Secretary Lin. Tang Hao nodded. What accident, Ol Huang? President Biao asked. I think it was a serious car accident. He was almost gone when he arrived at the hospital. The doctors say that there's a slim chance of survival, President Huang said sorrowfully. Lu Dajuan and the other people were silent. Sigh. I hope he makes it through. After a long while, they lamented. Twenty minutes later, President Huang's phone rang again. He excused himself and picked up the call away from the table. When he returned, his face was grimmer than ever. They managed to save his life, but, he's still in a coma. He might remain that way forever, President Huang said. Everyone sighed. Hey, Lil Tang, do you have a cure for this? President Biao asked. Right. Do you have a solution, Lil Tang? President Huang looked at Tang Hao expectantly. In his eyes, Tang Hao's medical skills were legendary. He might be able to do something. Well, Tang Hao hesitated. He contemplated for a while, then carefully said, there is a way, but... I've never tried it before. I can't guarantee that the procedure will be a success. That means that there's still hope then. President Huang was eager. Tang Hao lowered his head. There is a chance, but the patient is the son of a high dot ranking official. What happens if I fail? I'm afraid of getting into trouble. That's true. President Huang sighed. He thought for a bit, then said, how about we go take a look at the hospital? We'll decide after assessing the situation. Tang Hao hesitated for a while, then agreed. The group of people left the restaurant and hailed a cab to go to First Public Hospital. Chapter 32 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation First Public Hospital, Westridge District Two cabs sped along the road and stopped at the hospital entrance. Tang Hao and the others got off the cabs and went into the hospital. When they reached the ICU, they saw a crowd gathered in the corridors in front of a hospital room. Sobbing sounds could be heard. President Huang led the way. Someone came over when they saw him. You're here, Ran Gui. President Huang's full name was Huang Ran Gui. What's the situation, brother? President Huang asked anxiously. How else could it be? That person sighed. He looked anguished. The doctor said that he might have a slim chance of waking up if it's a short-term coma. But if it's a long-term coma, there's no hope. Sigh. How could this happen to him? Mingxian is a good kid. Why would he be punished like this? President Huang lamented. 
The door to the patient's room opened and some people walked out. The person in the lead was a doctor in a white robe. He wore glasses and looked to be in his 40s. Following right behind him were a husband and wife. The husband looked to be in his 50s. He had a square face and a fit body. His gaze carried an air of authority. At present, his expression was grim and he looked haggard. Next to him was his wife. Her eyes were swollen and she could be heard sobbing quietly. Is there no other way, Senior Dr. Chen? The man asked, choking back tears. As he spoke, his body was trembling. His eyes started to glisten as tears pooled. Senior Dr. Chen stopped walking. He sighed and said, Secretary Lin, I've already told you what I should say. It's not that there's no hope, but that, there's only a slim chance. Once someone falls into a cum, the probability of them regaining consciousness and making a full recovery is less than 10%. But that also means that there is still a less than 0.10% chance of recovery. From today onward we will be trying different methods to rouse him from the coma. Please be rest assured, Secretary Lin, that we are doing our best to save him. Secretary Lin's body teetered when he heard that, his face became paler. His body hunched up, and he seemed to age ten years in that instant. The woman sobbed louder and louder. Finally, she let loose and wailed. Tang Hao could not bear to watch from the sidelines. Less than ten percent, he mumbled to himself. This was a fairly low probability. If he were to perform his medical techniques though, the chances of success were not high either. He had never tried the technique before, and so he was not confident that he would succeed. The cause of the coma was in the brain. His technique was to activate meridian points in the brain with acupuncture. There was a set of acupuncture techniques in the scripture of the Divine Herbalist named Nine Needles of the Divine Herbalist. Tang Hao had studied the technique, though he had not put it into practice. Secretary Lin, Mingxian is blessed with lucky stars. He will definitely wake up. People in the corridor comforted the couple. How confident are you, Lil Tang? President Huang turned around and asked Tang Hao. I can't tell. I'll need to see the patient. Tang Hao replied after thinking. Then, let me ask. President Huang walked toward the patient's room as he spoke. Sis Yun. President Huang greeted the woman. The woman had already stopped sobbing. Her eyes were still swollen. She lifted her head and said haltingly, It's you, Rangue. Sis Yun, I've brought someone here. He's an incredible Chinese physician. Who knows he might be able to help, President Huang said. Su Yun was surprised. A hint of suspicion was seen in her eyes. Chinese physician. That's right. He's a miracle worker. Would you want to let him try? Su Yun hesitated. Her first reaction was to be skeptical about this Chinese physician. Even the senior doctor had already said that there was nothing he could do. What could a Chinese physician do? However, she was not about to give up hope in these desperate times. Where is he, Ran Gui? Su Yun became agitated. Over there. President Huang lifted a finger and pointed at Tang Hao standing not too far away. Su Yun was stunned when she saw Tang Hao. Ran Gui, you must be joking. He's just, how old is he? Some other people standing around them were dismayed. This isn't the time for pranks, Ran Gui. Isn't he just a kid? Sis Yun, listen to me. He is still young, yes, but he's incredibly talented. You can ask old Lu, old Ali, and the others. They'll vouch for him, President Huang said. I, Su Yun hesitated. At this moment, Secretary Lin came over. What is it? He asked. Ran Gui said he brought someone here. He's a Chinese physician, and he says that he is a miracle worker. I was thinking of letting him look at our son. What do you think? Su Yun replied. Secretary Lin's demeanor changed. Utter nonsense. How can you trust Chinese physicians? Rangui, how can you be so ridiculous? He chided. 
President Huang frowned hard. He did not expect Secretary Lin to react so intensely. How can you say that to Ron Gui? He's only trying to help. What else do you want to do at this time? Su Yun was angry. Even Senior Dr. Chen has said that there's no cure. Do you think some no.name self.proclaimed Chinese physician can do anything to help? He must be a con artist, Secretary Lin said. Everyone in the corridor nodded in agreement. Secretary Lin is right. He must be a con artist. There's no cure in this world for a coma yet. He must be daring to try to con the secretary. All of them gave disparaging comments while occasionally stealing condescending glances. They did not know who was the Chinese physician and so they could only look in the general direction of Tang Hao. Tang Hao frowned at their attitude. Never mind then, big bro, Wang. Let's go. It doesn't matter to me whether young master Lin lives or dies, Tang Hao said coldly. Everyone looked at him when he spoke. What? So he's the miracle doctor. Is this a joke? He looks so young. He looks like just a student. Everyone was relentless with their comments. Secretary Lin's eyebrows looked almost vertical. He reprimanded President Huang with a loud voice. Ron Gui, is he the supposed miracle doctor? Are you out of your mind, believing in nonsense like this? President Huang frowned but said nothing. Lu Dajuan was indignant at this display. Secretary Lin, I'm afraid you might be too rash. Ols Huang here is only trying to help. We all got here the moment we heard the news. As for this person here, we can all vouch for his abilities. President Biao, President Li, and the rest all agreed. That's right, Secretary Lin. You have yet to see what this young man can do. I'm sure you'll agree to Brother Tang's abilities once you see him in action. Secretary Lin's eyebrows were locked tight. He remained incredibly doubtful. He knew that these people were among the most prestigious in the district. Why were they helping this young fellow? Chapter 33 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Humph, how old is he? What kind of abilities would he even have? All of you, get out now. Secretary Lin flicked his sleeves and said coldly. Let's go, big bro, Wang. Tang Hao said, not mincing his words. Wait. Su Yun shouted. Ran Gui, let him see my son. What are you doing? Secretary Lin was furious. What am I doing? I'm trying to save our son. There's no harm with him looking, what if he has a solution? Don't you know that all these people are swindlers? I'd be the talk of the town if news got out. Secretary Lin's face was red with anger. Let me ask you, which is more important? Your face, or our son's life? Su Yun shrieked. She was incredibly emotional. You, Secretary Lin, did not know how to respond. Su Yun wiped her tears. She walked toward Tang Hao and said, How should I address you? My name is Tang Hao. You can call me Lil Tang. Oh. Lil Tang, can you save our Ming Xian? I'll have to take a look at him first. Only after knowing his symptoms can I make a diagnosis, Tang Hao said contemplatively. All right, let's go in. Please be quick. Su Yun dragged Tang Hao to enter the room. Secretary Lin followed behind into the room. His face was cold as he glared sharply at Tang Hao. Tang Hao surveyed the room. He saw the young man lying on the hospital bed. He looked to be in his early twenties and had a handsome face. Tang Hao briefly looked at his body's overall condition. Then he reached out to his wrist to check his pulse. Finally, he touched the patient's forehead and sensed his chi. This way, he could discern what was happening in the patient's brain. How is it, Lil Tang? Su Yun asked anxiously. She looked apprehensive, but at the same time hopeful. About three minutes later, Tang Hao retracted his hand. He stood there and thought long and hard. I can cure this, but there's only a 60 or 70% chance that I'll succeed, 
Tang Hao finally said. 60 or 70 percent. Su Yun looked overjoyed. I can't allow it. What if something goes wrong? Ming Xian has not awoken yet but at least he is still alive and there is always a chance that he awakens. If something goes awry, his life might be in danger. Secretary Lin said resolutely. Well, Su Yun hesitated. This was a difficult choice for her. Tang Hao glared at Secretary Lin coldly. Don't worry. Even if I fail to cure him, it won't threaten your son's life. I can guarantee that. And what is your guarantee worth? Secretary Lin retorted coldly. How will you be curing him, Lil Tang? Is it dangerous? Su Yun asked. Acupuncture, of course. Don't worry, it's totally safe, Tang Hao answered. Acupuncture. Su Yun breathed a sigh of relief. She had heard about the wonders of acupuncture before. Let him try, won't you? She turned around and asked Secretary Lin. Secretary Lin did not say anything. He stood there with a sullen face. He looked at Tang Hao, then at his son on the hospital bed. His fists were tightly clenched and his body was shaking. In his heart, he struggled with this dilemma. On one hand, he did not believe this so. called a physician. On the other, he was desperate for a cure. He was not optimistic about the 10% probability that senior Dr. Chin had promised him. Everyone in the room looked at him. Four or five minutes later, he nodded and said painfully, let him try. Oh, Secretary Lin. You can't do that. This is a hospital, how could you let them do anything they want? A nurse said. If something happens, I will bear all the responsibility. Secretary Lin said with a low voice. This? Oh. How can you do this? I'll go look for senior Dr. Chen. The nurse rushed out of the door. Now that Secretary Lin has agreed, then I shall give it a try. First of all, I need a set of needles. Golden needles will be the best, Tang Hao said. That's easy. I know an old Chinese physician who has a set. I'll hook you up with him. Lu Dajuan immediately took out his phone. He stepped outside to make a phone call, then quickly returned. It's done. He should be here in less than 20 minutes. Tang Hao nodded. A short while later, frantic footsteps were heard from the corridor. Then, senior Dr. Chen burst through the door as though he were on fire. What are you doing, Secretary Lin? This is a hospital. You can't just do anything you like here. There is still hope for young Master Lin. What happens if something goes wrong? Senior Dr. Chen asked frantically. He turned around and looked at Tang Hao. So this is the physician you were talking about. Are you crazy, Secretary Lin? Secretary Lin was adamant. Say no more, Senior Dr. Chen. I will bear full responsibility for anything that might happen. This? Secretary Lin. Sweat gathered on Senior Dr. Chen's forehead. He looked at Tang Hao again. This was ridiculous. How old can this kid be? He looked to be 18 at most. How can he be an expert in medical skills? What had gotten into Secretary Lin's head that he would trust this person? Even if he was truly talented, there was no way that he could revive a coma patient. The best Chinese physicians he knew did not boast that they had such abilities. Who was this callow child in front of them? A con artist. He must be a con artist. Senior Dr. Chen gritted his teeth as he looked at Tang Hao. Tang Hao glanced at him and said, Senior Dr. Chen, you will soon know whether I am a con artist. If you're worried, you can stand next to me while I insert the needles. Ten minutes later, the golden needles arrived. Tang Hao retrieved the golden needles from the case and inspected them one by one. He picked one, aimed it at the top of the patient's skull and gently pierced it. His hand movements were stable. The golden needle pierced the skin, through the skull and accurately hit the meridian point. As his level of cultivation increased, his reflexes and senses and his bodily functions were enhanced. His movements now were as precise as a machine. 
When the first needle was inserted, Senior Dr. Chan was still unconvinced. His expression changed as more needles were inserted. This young man's movements were extremely trained. He seemed to be a master of acupuncture. Don't tell me, he wasn't lying. Humph. <laughs> Even if he is incredibly talented, there's no way he could revive the patient. Senior Dr. Chen smirked. The atmosphere in the room was oppressive. Everyone looked at the young man. They were either apprehensive or suspicious. Su Yun, President Huang and the others had their hearts in their throats. Tang Hao stopped inserting needles after the ninth. He inhaled deeply, then channeled his chi into his palms. He gently massaged the golden needles to stimulate the meridian points. Ten minutes later, the electroencephalogram started pulsing. Then, the patient's body shook violently and started to move. His lifeless eyes became clear as he slowly returned to consciousness. Chapter 34 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Everyone in the hospital room was stunned. They looked at this scene incredulously. Especially Senior Dr. Chen. His eyes were opened wide and round. They almost popped out from their sockets. How, how is this possible? He thought that he was dreaming and reached to pinch his face. He yelped in pain. Ming Xian. Su Yun excitedly pounced onto the bed and grasped her son's hands. Lin Ming Xian moaned. His eyeballs turned and saw her. Ma. He mumbled. Su Yun was crying tears of joy. Secretary Lin was trembling. His face wore an expression of incredulity. He woke up. He really woke up. Everyone was cheering with surprise. This is a miracle. He cured the patient with just a few needles. He's a divine doctor, a true divine doctor. Everyone heaped praises on to Tang Hao. They did not look at him with suspicion anymore, only with admiration and respect. Ha! <laughs> He's done it. Lu Dajuan slapped his thighs and exclaimed. I knew that Lil Tang can do it. President Huang breathed a sigh of relief, as though a heavy burden had been lifted from his shoulders. Everyone was emotional over this miracle, except for senior Dr. Chen and the few nurses. How is this possible, as far as he knew, Western medicine had always been superior to Chinese medicine. If Western medicine could not cure it, then it would have been impossible for Chinese medicine to do so. There was no cure for a coma in Western medicine. What he had just witnessed had utterly subverted his knowledge. Was it merely acupuncture? He had never heard nor seen before such amazing acupuncture skills. Describing it as a miracle was no exaggeration. Ming Xian, Ma is here. Don't worry, you'll recover in no time, Su Yun said emotionally as she grasped her son's hand. Shh! Tang Hao shushed at her with a finger on his lips. The treatment isn't over yet. Also, the patient is still weak. Try not to agitate him. Su Yun hastily moved away from the bed and politely retreated to one side. Tang Hao channeled Qi in the needles for a while more, then finally removed the gold needles one by one and packed them in their case. He exhaled a long breath and announced, everything went smoothly. Young Master Lin has regained his consciousness. What's left is for his body to recover naturally. He returned the case of golden needles to Lu Dajuan. Lil. No. Divine Dr. Tang, I don't know how to thank you. Su Yun grasped Tang Hao's hands tightly. No need to thank me, just doing what I can. Thank Big Bro, Wang if you must. Tang Hao smiled. Also, please don't call me Divine Doctor. I'm not worthy of that title. Secretary Lin walked in front of Tang Hao and bowed deeply. Little brother Tang, I was wrong just now. Please accept my apology. What are you doing, Secretary Lin? Tang Hao was flustered. I am ashamed of my actions earlier. I had doubted you and I said some words that were offensive to you. I would like to ask for your forgiveness, Secretary Lin said. You don't have to do that, Secretary Lin. Tang Hao smiled. He was not bothered by the earlier incident. 
He knew that anyone in Secretary Lin's shoes would have doubted the same. Secretary Lin was more ashamed of himself when he heard Tang Hao say that. Little brother Tang, your medical skills are legendary, and you have a great heart. You are truly a gentleman. That's right, a true gentleman. Everyone agreed with Secretary Lin. They looked at Tang Hao with eager eyes. All of them knew that they would eventually fall sick, and they would like to be acquainted with a medical expert in case that happens. Divine Dr. Tang, may I have your phone number? Divine Dr. Tang, this is my name card. I'll treat you to dinner sometime. Everyone crowded around Tang Hao. Silence. Silence. What are you all doing? This is a hospital room. Please leave immediately to not disturb the patient, Senior Dr. Chen roared and drove them out of the room. Then, he turned around and looked at Tang Hao. He looked ashamed of himself. Dr. Tang, I am sorry for offending you earlier. I did not expect that you possess such wondrous medical skills at such a young age. I have learned a lot today. You flatter me, Senior Dr. Chen. Tang Hao smiled. Eh? You're too humble. I didn't know a single thing when I was your age. Right, Dr. Tang, I wonder from whom you might have learned your medical skills. Senior Dr. Chen asked. I don't have a master. I learned all these medical skills by myself from a medical text I found, Tang Hao said. Senior Dr. Chen was shocked. He went slack.jawed and could not close his mouth. His eyes were opened round and wide. The way he looked at Tang Hao was exactly like the way he looked at a monster. He learned it by himself. Oh my god. Is this person still human? He stood there on the spot, dumbfounded. Let's go, big bro, Lu. After Tang Hao exited the room and dealt with the group of people that crowded around him, he exited the hospital with Lu Dajuan and the rest. After another short chat, Tang Hao rode on his little three-wheeled motorcycle and returned to Tang Village. I'd like to make myself a set of golden needles if I have the time. While reflecting on the incident at the hospital on his drive home, he thought of that idea. I'll have to study more thoroughly on the scripture of the divine herbalist too. The knowledge contained in the scripture was all dot encompassing. He had only scratched the surface thus far. The village was bustling with activity when Tang Hao returned. The villagers all greeted him eagerly when they saw him enter the village. The mothers treated him like some sort of treasure, crowding around him and chattering non-stop, trying to introduce a new girlfriend. Tang Hao was intimidated by the display of hospitality. The girls in the village also looked at him differently, which made Tang Hao feel awkward. He finally reached home. Tang Hao turned on the lights and looked at the simple fixtures in the house. He began to feel emotional. The paperwork for the new house was complete. He would be moving out in a few days. He felt some reluctance when he thought of having to move away. He sat at the balcony and enjoyed the night breeze. He did not say anything as he looked at the mountain. Pa Ma. Your Lil Hao has finally made a name for himself. He's doing just fine. Don't worry. He mumbled as he stared at the night sky. Tang Hao woke up very early the next morning. He rode on his little three-wheeled motorcycle and went to town. He bought a lot of cigarettes and fine wine before he paid Uncle Lee a visit. Tang Hao's phone rang as he stepped out of the delivery store. He saw that it was Sis Xiangyi calling him. Tang Hao was surprised. After that night, he had not seen Sis Xiangyi for two or three days. However, they kept in touch with messages. Hey, Lil Tang. Are you free today? Sis Xiangyi slurred over the phone. I'm free. What's up? I'll be playing tennis with a bunch of friends today. Why don't you come along? Tang Hao was surprised. He scratched his head. Tennis. I'm not too good at the sport. I've only played it a few times in high school. No problem. I just need company. Let me tell you, there's this annoying guy who will be coming, so, Sis Xiangyi also felt a little awkward telling him the reason. Tang Hao immediately understood. Sis Xiangyi was using him as a pretend boyfriend. All right, I'll be there. 
After Tang Hao ended the call, he rode on his little three-wheeled motorcycle toward Azure Sky Gardens. Chapter 35 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Traffic was busy on the road. A little three-wheeled motorcycle was seen speeding amid the cars. In a short while, Tang Hao had already neared Azure Sky Gardens. He was about to turn a corner when a car came speeding from his side and nearly hit him. Fortunately, Tang Hao's reflexes were fast and managed to dodge in the nick of time. F asterisk CK don't you have eyes? Tang Hao cursed. He glared at the car and prepared to leave. The black Audi screeched to a halt. The car window rolled down and someone looked out. That was a youth in his mid-twenties. His hair was impeccably styled with mousse and glistened under the bright noon sun. He wore gold-rimmed glasses and looked gentlemanly. The words that came out of his mouth, however, betrayed his upbringing. Damn it, are you retarded? How do you drive? You can't even properly ride a stupid broken three-wheeled motorcycle. What an idiot. Do you know how much this car costs? Do you think you can afford to compensate me if you scratched it? You look like a loser. Are you a peasant laborer? Or a delivery boy? Whatever, you all are country bumpkins and beggars anyway. If you scratch my car, that's one month of your salary gone. You better watch out, humph. Useless piece of trash. After an intense round of cursing, the youth sped away in his car and soon was out of sight. Tang Hao stood dumbfounded on the spot. The youth was the one who drove recklessly and nearly caused an accident, but he did not feel the slightest sense of guilt at all. He looked like a gentleman, but every other word that came out of his mouth was filthy. An animal in human clothes. Idiot. Tang Hao rolled his eyes and cursed his bad luck. He continued riding toward Azure Sky Gardens. He soon reached Azure Sky Gardens. The view after entering the housing area gave him a shock. A car was parked in front of him. It was a black Audi and looked somewhat familiar, like the car that had almost knocked him down. He looked more closely and saw someone standing near the hood of the car. He was in a trim business suit and looked like a gentleman. He was exactly the idiot earlier. It's him again. Tang Hao mumbled as his face darkened. Wait, isn't where he's standing house number nine? Tang Hao was surprised. House number nine was Sis Xiongi's house. F asterisk CK. So the annoying guy Sis Xiongi mentioned is him. Tang Hao immediately understood the situation. Then, he looked at him with disdain. He is annoying indeed. Someone like him wants to court Sis Xiongi. He must be daydreaming. Tang Hao chuckled, then slowly rode his little three-wheeled motorcycle over. The youth was dressed in a trim business suit and held a bouquet in his hand. He occasionally straightened his suit and adjusted his hair, as if he was at the forefront of fashion. Xiangmi, this bouquet is proof of my love for you. 90.9 .9 roses represent my heart, he was mumbling to himself as if rehearsing his pickup lines. Tang Hao cringed when he heard the cheesy lines. The youth noticed Tang Hao as he neared. He glanced at him and was surprised. It's you. The youth frowned, and on his face was an expression of disgust and loathing. Looks like you're really a delivery boy. Otherwise, how can someone of your social class enter this high dot class residential area? Tang Hao rolled his eyes and ignored him. He continued driving forward and parked his motorcycle next to the Audi. Hey, why are you stopping here? You're in the way of my car. Get out of the way. If you don't get lost quickly, I'm calling the security. Go ahead and call the security then, idiot. Tang Hao chuckled. You, the youth was furious. His eyes bulged and he looked like he could murder someone. You country bumpkin, you to challenge me. Don't you know who I am? I can make a call now and you'll be dead meat. Tang Hao rolled his eyes again. He calmly took out his phone and dialed Sis Xiangyi's number. Hello? Sis Xiangyi. I'm here. Tang Hao said. I'm standing outside your door. 
By the way, why is there an idiot standing here spewing? Shh! Asterisk T from his mouth. On the other end of the call, Sis Xiaomi laughed. Just wait for a moment, Lil Tang. I'll be there right away. You. How dare you curse me? What's the meaning of this? The youth was burning with rage. His gaze shot daggers at Tang Hao. Since you're a delivery boy, then pass me her package. I'll pass it to Xiangyi, and you can get lost. You're an eyesore standing here. The youth charged at him angrily. Then, he took out a 50 yuan note from his wallet and threw it at him. Take this, and get lost. Tang Hao rolled his eyes again. He thought that this person was developmentally challenged in a way that made him think too highly of himself. Why are you still here? The youth became angrier as he saw Tang Hao not going anywhere. At this time, the door opened, and from it emerged a beautiful silhouette. Tang Hao was stunned when he saw her. She was dressed in a white t dot shirt and a short skirt. The clothes had allowed her to flaunt her perfect body. Her waist was slim and looked like it could be held in one arm. Her legs were slender and fair. Tang Hao was distracted looking at her. As for the other guy, his eyes were sparkling and his Adam's apple was rolling. He looked like a pervert. Xiangyi, look. These flowers are for you. The youth tidied his suit once more and stood up straight like a peacock spreading its tail feathers. He arrogantly held up the bouquet and walked forward. Qin Xiangyi covered her mouth and smiled as she walked forward. The youth's heart almost melted and he was almost floating. She smiled. She's smiling at me. She must be touched by my relentless efforts. Xiangyi, these 90.9 roses represent my true feelings for you. He spoke passionately as he handed the bouquet in his hands to her. However, he froze the next moment. Qin Xiangyi walked past him without even looking at him. Xiangyi. He was flustered as he turned to call her name. When he turned around, the scene that he witnessed was like a lightning strike to the head, causing him to be paralyzed on the spot. Oh, darling, you're finally here. I was so anxious. The youth had thought Qin Xiangyi as an elegant but icy goddess. At this moment, she fell into the embrace of the delivery boy and spoke in a fawning manner, as though she were a household pet looking for treats. His face turned green at an instant and his expression was ghastly. Why is this? He could not believe his eyes. This scene in front of him was too ridiculous. Since when did Xiangyi have a boyfriend, and why is he a poor kid? This was impossible. Xiangyi's taste and social class should have forbidden her to be matched with a poor kid. The youth's heart burned with jealousy. His entire body was shaking. She must have gotten something wrong. That must be the case. He convinced himself. Chapter 36 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation In his embrace, the woman was as beautiful as Jade and her fragrance invaded his nose. Tang Hao stood there stiffly, too scared to move. What are you doing, Sis Xiangyi? Tang Hao whispered. You still don't understand. Her face was starting to blush and she looked coy. Quick, hug me, silly. She was anxious when she saw Tang Hao just standing there dumbfounded. Oh. Tang Hao came to his senses. He reached around and hugged her by the waist. Thump. Thump. Their hearts were beating wildly at this moment. However, the romantic atmosphere did not last for too long before it was disrupted. Let her go, asshole. The youth bellowed, Xiangyi, who the hell is he? Qin Xiangyi retracted her body and grabbed Tang Hao's arm. Isn't it obvious? I'm already calling him a darling. He's my boyfriend, of course. Qin Xiangyi said. Impossible. This is impossible. You're lying. I've never heard that you have a boyfriend. Also, with your conditions, how could you fall in love with a loser like that? Look at him. His clothes cost less than a hundred yuan. And his motorcycle too, it's such an eyesore. How could you fall in love with a poor kid like him? 
The youth roared in extreme anger. He could not believe everything he saw. In the youth's eyes, Tang Hao was obviously such a poor loser and a bottom-up feeder. Someone from a lower social class. As for him, he was a social elite, the cream of the crop. While that guy was the total opposite. On normal days, he would not even bother looking at him. However, a lowlife like him was hugging his goddess right in front of his eyes, and both of them were behaving intimately. He could not accept this. The fires of jealousy raged in his heart. His face was contorted into a beast-like expression. Yes, you must be lying to me, right? You purposely looked for this person to deceive me. Qin Xiangyi replied coldly, Fu Renjie, don't be so full of yourself. Why would I need to deceive you? He really is my boyfriend. Also, how does he look like a loser? He looks so handsome. Also, what about him being poor? I have money. I'll just feed him for the rest of his life. Isn't that so, darling? She puckered her lips and gently pecked Tang Hao's cheek. Tang Hao blushed. He coughed once and said, Who is this guy, darling? Why is he so annoying? His name is so funny though. Fu Renjie. Why not just call him Fu Yanjie One? Qin Xiangyi burst out laughing. She laughed without reservation. You're so mean, Lil Tang. She said softly next to his ear. Fu Renjie was furious. His face was red like an agitated bull. What did you say, you weakling? Do you want to die? His face was viciously contorted. Are you even a man? You'd rather be some woman's toy boy. Don't you have any dignity? Dignity? What's that? Tang Hao chuckled. Xiangyi, look at this guy. He's a weakling. He's no match for you. How can you fall for someone like that? I, Fu Renjie, am superior in my looks, knowledge and upbringing. Why don't you choose me, but instead choose this little white face one? Fu Renjie roared, close to hysteria. Qin Xiangyi said. Fu Renjie, I have zero feelings for you, and you can't force me to fall for you. Also, you might be overconfident. You're really no match for him when it comes to looks or knowledge. Nonsense. I'm no match for him. I have an overseas master's degree, and I'm no match for a country bumpkin. Fu Renjie burst out in laughter. If you don't believe it, whatever. Let's go, darling. While Qin Xiangyi spoke, she pulled Tang Hao's hand and led him to the little three-wheeled motorcycle. Tang Hao was shocked. Sis Xiangyi, you want to ride on this? He whispered. Why not? I think it's pretty cool. This should be interesting. Qin Xiangyi chuckled. Well, all right then. Tang Hao could only agree. Meanwhile, Fu Renjie's face became greener. He found it unbelievable that a goddess who had always been noble and elegant in his eyes would stoop to riding a broken three wheeled motorcycle. Tang Hao rode on his motorcycle, and Qin Xiangyi sat behind him. The little motor of his ride roared to life, and the little three wheeled motorcycle sped away. Fu Renjie was left standing alone in front of house number nine. He was still holding on to the bouquet of roses, and his face was scarily dark and brooding. Curse you, damn little white face. I won't let you get away with this. He roared and threw the bouquet of roses to the ground, then stomped on it like a madman. The petals and leaves of the roses scattered everywhere. The motorcycle sped its way toward the exit of Azure Sky Gardens. Sitting in the back seat, Qin Xiangyi stretched her arms and cheered happily. Sis Xiangyi, you'd better sit tight. Tang Hao laughed. Yeah. Qin Xiangyi replied. A security guard was standing at the entrance to Azure Sky Gardens, a cigarette in his mouth. He patted all over his body and found a lighter. He was about to light up the cigarette when a little three-wheeled motorcycle whooshed past him like a gust of wind. Sitting in the back seat was a sexy woman. He was stunned. His mouth subconsciously opened, and the cigarette fell out. F asterisk CK me, what a cool ride. He finally managed to speak after a long while. Eh? 
isn't that person Lil Tang? And the woman looks familiar too, he scratched the back of his head, then crouched to pick up the cigarette and put it in his mouth. Suddenly, his whole body trembled as he remembered who that woman was. F asterisk CK, it's boss Chin Xiangyi, the femme fatale. He cried out loud. The cigarette in his mouth fell again. Chapter 37 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation on the road, the three that wheeled motorcycle sped like the wind. In the driver's seat was a teenager of 17 or 18. In the back seat was a beautiful woman of a thousand charms. She attracted many eyes all along the way. Many car drivers went wide-eyed and slacked at jawed when they saw her. F asterisk CK. She's beautiful. Damn it, what has the world come to? You can score a beautiful girl even with your broken motorcycle. God must be blind. The car drivers exclaimed in surprise and envy. Occasionally there were sounds of screeching brakes, and with people cursing loudly in between. The roads became congested all of a sudden. Riders of three at wheeled motorcycles or electric motorcycles were also staring wide eyed and slacked at jawed. Their split in concentration made them ram into the vehicles in front, causing them to fly forward. He is absolutely godlike. Many people exclaimed. They only had admiration for Tang Hao. Tang Hao could only regret that Sis Xiangyi attracted too much attention. He remembered that kiss earlier and blushed. Tang Hao regained his composure. Sis Xiangyi, who actually is that Fu Renjie. He turned around to ask. He. He's an annoying guy. A friend of a friend. He's been trying to court me ever since we met just once. He's always full of himself and is such a hypocrite, Qin Xiangyi replied. He does seem like an idiot, Tang Hao said. Yes, he's an idiot. He always thinks that he's better than others, always boasting about how great he is. This kind of man is the worst, Qin Xiangyi was indignant. Then, she smiled gently. Lil Tang, you're still the best. Tang Hao grinned. His heart was filled with joy. So when are you moving, Lil Tang? Qin Xiangyi asked. In a few days. Right, Sis Xiangyi, where are we going? Oh. I nearly forgot to tell you. We're heading to the north of town. There is a tennis club there. Qin Xiangyi suddenly remembered. All right. Tang Hao replied, then turned the motorcycle around and steered toward the north. Flying Wave Tennis Club was situated in the north of town, near the outskirts. Six people, three men and three women, were gathered at the entrance of the club. They were all young in their mid-twenties and were dressed in sportswear. They chatted casually while occasionally glancing at the road. Why isn't Xiangyi here yet? One of the women complained as she looked at the road yet again. She should be almost here. Bro, Fu went to fetch her, so they should be here soon. I wonder if there were any diversions along the way. One of the men joked. Fu Renjie. Forget about it. Xiangyi doesn't like him. She will never ride in his car. By the way, Qian Wei, didn't we agree on not inviting Fu Renjie? Don't blame me, Xiao Ma. He insisted on coming and I felt bad for saying no, Chen Wei said, I thought bro, Fu is quite a nice guy, and I don't know why Qin Xiangyi doesn't like him. There doesn't have to be a reason. Wu Xiaomo replied. She doesn't like him now, but that doesn't mean she won't like him in the future. Bro, Fu has been devoted to her, and that might just melt the icy heart of the femme fatale, Chen Wei said. Pa. The Xiangyi I know has very good taste in men, was Xiaomo said nonchalantly. In a while, a black Audi was seen coming from the end of the road. Oh, bro, Fu is here. I don't see Xiangyi's car anywhere. She must be riding with him. Xian Wei shouted excitedly. He winked at Wu Xiaomo and exclaimed, See, didn't I tell you so? Wu Xiaomo was a little surprised. The black Audi sped down the road and parked in a vacant space near them. A car door opened, and Fu Renjie stepped out, wearing a dangerously gloomy face. 
The group saw that and was confused. What happened, bro, Fu? Where's Xiangyi? Didn't she come with you? Qian Wei asked. Fu Renjia did not reply. His face was sullen and green. Another vehicle was heard driving down the road. However, it was not a car this time, but a three-wheeled motorcycle, speeding down the road like the wind. Qian Wei and the others looked along the road. They ignored this little three-wheeled motorcycle. Where's Xiangyi? Bro, Fu, say something. Is she staying at home today? Qian Wei pursued the topic. Fu Renjia still looked sullen. His eyes were sharp as a hawk as he glared at the three-wheeled motorcycle that was approaching. The little three-wheeled motorcycle came near and stopped in front of them. A woman hopped off the back seat. Qian Wei and the others looked at her and were instantly dumbfounded. What? What's going on here? Why did Qin the femme fatale ride on a broken three-wheeled motorcycle? Qian Wei was puzzled. That was something impossible in his eyes. Qin the femme fatale was undoubted a popular beautiful woman who had a family fortune of tens of millions. Did she not have any other ride other than this old, shabby three? Wheeled motorcycle. Wu Xiaomo was also confused, then, she burst out in laughter. Xiaomi, you're so random. Where did you find this ride? It must be hard to find, right? Qin Xiangyi turned to look at the people. When her eyes fell on Fu Renjia, she frowned. Then, her expression returned to normal. She smiled and greeted this group of people. Qian Wei saw that Tang Hao was still there, so he yelled at him. Hey! Why aren't you leaving yet? Oh! She hasn't paid. How much is it? I'll foot the bill for Qin the femme fatale. He took out his wallet while saying so. His first impression of Tang Hao was that he was a motorcycle driver. Qin Xiangyi smiled. Qian Wei, you're mistaken. His name is Tang Hao, and he's my boyfriend. After that, she walked close to Tang Hao and hugged his arm. Oh. Your boyfriend. Qian Wei mumbled. What? Boyfriend. He screamed when his brain finally processed the statement. He stood stiffly, his eyes were opened round and wide, and he wore an incredulous expression. Wu Xiaoma and the others behind him were also dumbfounded. Their expressions looked like they had heard the most unbelievable news in the world. All of them stared at Tang Hao with round eyes. The men with enmity, and the women with razor-sharp analytical gazes, as though they were dissecting him. As they scrutinized him, their brows were locked even tighter. No matter how they looked, this kid in front of them was as plain as he could be. His clothes were shabby, and his three-wheeled motorcycle was old. He was obviously a poor kid. Are you all right, Xiangyi? Wu Xiaomo looked worriedly at Qin Xiangyi. Better than ever. Qin Xiangyi smiled. As she spoke, she hugged Tang Hao's arm tightly and leaned close to him. Wu Xiaomo was dazed, and her expression was hard to tell. She had assumed earlier that Qin Xiangyi asked this person to be her pretend boyfriend. Looking at how intimate they were, it did not look like she was pretending at all. Who is he? She was intensely curious. Qian Wei leaned close to her and mumbled, Xiaomi, didn't you say just now that Xiangyi has good taste in men? Look at her now. And who did she fall for? Wu Xiaomi stood stiffly on the spot, feeling embarrassed. Chapter 38 you are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Thwack Thwack At the tennis courts, one could always hear the sounds of tennis balls being hit by rackets and people shouting. Tang Hao was sitting by the side of a tennis court while looking at an ongoing match. In the tennis court, a woman was running back and forth swinging a tennis racket. Her long hair danced in the wind and her miniskirt waved, exposing her long legs which were dizzyingly fair and slender. As she sprinted across her court, the twin peaks on her chest wobbled. It was a stimulating sight. Her presence on the tennis court had attracted the eyes of all the males in the vicinity. 
the male players on the tennis court to her left and right unleashed all their hidden techniques. They wanted to attract this beautiful woman's attention. Qian Wei, Fu Renjie, and the other men were sitting not too far away from Tang Hao. They occasionally whispered among themselves while stealing hostile glances at him. Men are all like this. When they see a beautiful woman, even though they might not want to claim them as their own, they would still feel uncomfortable when they see the woman fall for someone else. This was what they were thinking at this moment. In their eyes, this scenario was like a beautiful rose stuck on top of a pile of manure. Their hearts were burning with indignation, and also a little bit of jealousy. Especially Fu Renjie, who was gnashing his teeth at the moment. Two women were sitting on the other side of the court. They also occasionally glanced at Tang Hao, and in their gazes were sheer puzzlement. They did not understand why Qin Xiangyi fell for a poor kid like him. A while later, Qin Xiangyi came off the court to rest. Hey, Xiangyi. Come here. The two women rose to their feet to drag Qin Xiangyi to their side of the court. They were planning to interrogate her. Xiangyi, who is he? He's really your boyfriend. Qin Xiangyi blushed and silently nodded. Are you serious? Xiangyi, maybe you should get your brain checked. There are so many people going after you in the entire Westridge district that they can form a line from the west border to the east border, but you picked a poor kid. So what's so good about him? That's right. There are so many people for you to choose from, so why did you fall for him? The two women were continuously dressing him down. Qin Xiangyi was not angry, but instead, she smiled. Don't you've always wanted to know where the beauty enhancement cream and weight that loss potions come from? The two of them were stunned and their faces displayed utter incredulity. You mean, that's from him? The two women turned and looked at Tang Hao in amazement. That's right, he concocted those. He's not poor at all. In fact, he had just purchased a mansion at Celestial Foothill Gardens. Qin Xiangyi said. What? Celestial Foothill Gardens. Those mansions with astronomical prices. Tens of millions each. One of them exclaimed softly. Her eyes were opened round and wide as she found it hard to believe. That's right. The developer of the area, President Liu of Brilliant Property, is his sworn brother. Qin Xiangyi continued. President Liu. You mean Lu Dajuan? The other woman also cried out in surprise. That's right. He has an amazing array of talents. He knows medical skills and kung fu. Look at him, he looks pretty cute too, Qin Xiangyi started counting with her fingers. Stop. Stop. Stop speaking, Xiangyi. You sound like a bimbo. Her two friends could not take it anymore. The two women looked at Tang Hao again and felt a little flustered. If you're so rich, why are you still dressed so shabbily and rode a broken three-wheeled motorcycle? Who knows that you are rich? They thought. Tang Hao blushed when he realized that two women were looking at him. He had overheard every word of their conversation. So? I have so many good points. He mumbled to himself. Xiangyi, I'm going to the washroom. Do you all want to come along? Wu Xiaoma came over. Let's go. Qin Xiangyi and the other women stood up and headed for the washroom. The few men sitting around the court moved into action when they saw the girls leave. Fu Renjie stood up first and walked over to Tang Hao. The four men surrounded Tang Hao. Their faces were hostile. Humph. <laughs> You're indeed a little white face. Your looks are not bad. I didn't expect Qin the femme fatale to fall for your style. Kid, if you know what's good for you, leave Qin Xiangyi at once. Have you ever considered that you're not on her level? If you dare to disobey us, you'd better watch every step. Fu Renjie laughed coldly with a sinister face. Tang Hao's expression went cold. You guys think you can touch me? Damn it, you brat. Getting arrogant now, are we? You think you're somebody now just because you're under Xiangyi's care. I'll beat you up into a pulp. Fu Renjie, burning with anger, clenched his fist and aimed it at Tang Hao's face. Tang Hao smirked. 
A weak punch like that posed no danger to him. He lifted his hand and grabbed his opponent's wrist. He tightened his grip, and Fu Renjia squealed like a pig being sent to the slaughter. His face became pale as a sheet. Let go of me. Let go. He screamed in agony. He felt that the hand that grabbed his wrist was like a steel clamp. He could not move a millimeter. What the hell? How can this kid possess so much strength? Tang Hao narrowed his eyes. There was a glint of coldness in them as he strengthened his grip. Fu Renjie's cries became louder and louder. Many people curiously came over to look at the source of the screaming. Qian Wei and the others were all shocked beyond belief. They did not expect this scrawny little kid to be so strong. What are you all doing? Qin Xiangyi's voice was heard from afar. Tang Hao immediately let go. Fu Renjia stumbled backward and fell on his rear. It was an extremely embarrassing sight. Qian Wei, what are you all doing? Are you bullying Lil Tang? Wu Xiaomo was also yelling. Are you okay, Lil Tang? All of you are grown adults. How can you do this? I've mistaken you for good people. The two other women also rushed over anxiously. Qian Wei and the others were all confused. What's gotten into all of them? Weren't they ignoring this kid earlier? Why did they suddenly start calling him Lil Tang as though they are old friends? We're not bullying him. We only want to invite him to a tennis match. He's already here at the tennis court anyway, so he should at least play a match, don't you think so? Qian Wei explained. Wu Xiaoma and the others were exasperated. They were not idiots. They had seen the events that transpired earlier. Tang Hao spoke. I'm not good at tennis. I've only played several games when I was in high school. Qian Wei and the others were happy when they heard that. Don't worry, it's the taking part that counts. If you're a real man, come play a match with us. Qian Wei smiled hospitably. In his heart, he was cackling with glee. He thought that he could take this kid down a notch in front of Qin the femme fatale. Well, Tang Hao hesitated. Fu Renjie clambered from the ground and yelled at him. Hmph, Tang, if you're a real man, you will compete with me. If you lose, you will leave Xiangyi forever. Do you dare? Chapter 39 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation, how can you do this, Fu Renjie? Lil Tang isn't a tennis player. Wu Xiaoma said indignantly. That's right. You guys have played tennis for so many years. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves, challenging a newbie? Fu Renjia was red in the face. He pointed a finger at Tang Hao. So, Tang, do you dare? Are you a real man? Lil Tang, you don't have to entertain ridiculous requests like this. Just ignore him. Wu Xiaoma was even more anxious than Tang Hao. Just ignore him. Qin Xiangyi also agreed. Tang Hao slowly stood up and told them, don't worry. Then, he looked at Fu Renjie. I accept your challenge. Let's play a match then. However, if I win, you'd better keep your distance from Xiangyi. It's a bet. Whoever loses, leaves. Fu Renjie was ecstatic. He nearly laughed out loud. He had played tennis for about 10 years. He was not considered a pro, though he was still one of the better players in the local scene. Defeating a newbie should be a walk in the park. He's a country bumpkin after all. I only needed to rile him up and he'll fall into my trap. He was trembling with excitement. He immediately went off to change into sportswear. <laughs> Let's prepare the popcorn. We'll see how bro, Fu torments this kid. Qian Wei and the other men laughed at Tang Hao's misfortune. Why did you accept his challenge, Lil Tang? Don't you know that he's quite proficient in tennis? Qin Xiangyi whispered. Don't worry. I won't lose. Tang Hao replied. But, Qin Xiangyi was anxious. Tang Hao smiled and gave her a look of assurance. 
Can I borrow a racket? Wu Xiaoma immediately passed him one. Tang Hao took the racket and gripped it tightly. He swung it a few times to familiarize himself with its weight distribution. Then, he closed his eyes and countless images flashed past his mind. It was true that he was not a tennis player. However, he had played several matches when he was in high school and had read many books on tennis, as well as watched many tennis games on television. He understood the underlying concepts behind the game. His physique was totally different from back then. Ever since he had started on his path of cultivation, his body had undergone a total transformation, and his physical aptitudes have been augmented dramatically beyond the realm of normal humans. Looking back at those techniques, mastering them was trivially easy. Fu Renxia walked to the other side of the court. He cracked his neck and stretched his body as a warm-up. He laughed coldly and his expression was confident. There was no doubt that victory would be his. His problem was how to torment this fellow and utterly embarrass him. The ruckus earlier had attracted the attention of people on the other courts. They had gathered around to watch the ensuing match. Isn't that Fu Renjia? That kid is finished. I don't think he can score a single point against him. I think these two people are competing over a woman. There, it's that beautiful woman. Knowing that their tennis duel was over a woman, especially a beautiful woman, had reignited the excitement in the crowd. They shouted and cheered, and the atmosphere became heated. Xiaoni, why didn't you stop him? He's a newbie. He's no match for Fu Renjia. Wu Xiaomao anxiously grasped Qin Xiangyi's hand. Qin Xiangyi's eyebrows were furrowed and she was also worried. However, she suddenly remembered that day when he also acted in a similarly confident way when facing that bunch of hooligans. She smiled and felt a lot more relaxed. I believe in him. Eh, Xiangyi. Are you stupid? What's the point in believing in him? Wu Xiaomao rolled her eyes. She did not know what else to say. A portion of the crowd parted. A burly man in his thirties stepped forth. He had a square face and looked somewhat fierce. Coach Su is here. Someone in the crowd cried out. Coach Su was a popular figure in the local tennis circles. He was a professional player when he was young, and he was still one of the top players even after he became a coach. Coach Su walked next to the court in great strides. He looked to the left and the right, then laughed. Fu Renjia, why are you challenging a scrawny little kid? Won't you be bullying him? Coach Su, please be the umpire. Fu Renjia said. Coach Su took a look at Tang Hao, then nodded. All right, I will be the umpire. Don't play too rough, Fu Renjia, at least show him some mercy. Who's serving first? Coach Su asked the two while clutching a tennis ball. Let him serve. Fu Renjia pointed at Tang Hao. All right. Kid, catch. Coach Su tossed the ball at Tang Hao. Tang Hao opened his eyes. He reached out and caught the tennis ball firmly in his grasp. He held firmly in his palm and carefully analyzed its weight distribution. All right, let's begin. Coach Su raised an arm and shouted. The atmosphere at the tennis court became more heated. All eyes were focused on the boy with the tennis ball. This boy held the ball in his hand and stood there quietly, not moving a muscle. When some people in the crowd were starting to become impatient, he started moving. He walked over to the serving position, then gently tossed the tennis ball in his hand. The tennis ball rose into the air, then fell toward the ground. The strangest thing was that the boy did not move at all. His eyes followed the movement of the ball. Thud. The ball fell to the ground and bounced. Whoa. The crowd was riled. Then, everyone booed loudly. F asterisk CK me, is he a newbie? Don't tell me he doesn't even know how to serve. What's there to watch then? Everyone looked disappointed as they booed. Fu Renjie was shocked, then burst out laughing. He knew that the opponent was a newbie, but did not expect that he did not know how to serve a ball. Wu Xiaoma sighed sadly and covered her face. I can't bear to watch. She mumbled. Tang Hao was unaffected by the booing. 
he remained his composure while furrowing his eyebrows as if he had just understood something. He bent down and picked up the ball, then threw it into the air once again. Once again, he did not move and allowed the ball to fall to the ground. The crowd booed again. What's this kid trying to do? Coach Sue was starting to become impatient. He wanted to say something but he saw the boy pick up the ball and throw it again. This time, he moved. At the moment he swung his racket, his posture drastically changed from someone normal to someone as fierce and intimidating as a tiger. The racket struck the tennis ball. Thwack. The ball rebounded with astonishing speed, flew over the net and hit the opponent's side of the court. The ball hit the ground with a thud and left a mark, then bounced up. It flew at an impossible angle toward Fu Renjia. Bam. Right on the chin. Fu Renjia cried out in pain, then stumbled and fell backward. He was thoroughly confounded. The tennis court fell into a dead silence. Chapter 40 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation No one made a sound on the vast tennis court. All the people stood there, their mouths open and their eyes bulging round and wide. Their faces displayed utter shock and confusion. What, what happened just now? That, that shot earlier. How did the ball bounce and smack Fu Renjia? Many people in the crowd cried out in surprise and puzzlement. More people stood on the spot, their eyes displaying a look of extreme disbelief. Coach Su also stood there, slack.jawed. Suddenly, he remembered something and his face changed into a panicked expression. That, don't tell me that was, the twist serve. His voice was trembling. He swallowed hard. The twist serve was a legendary technique. In real life, not many professional players were able to pull it off. It could be said that it was almost like a fantasy. Those who mastered this technique were the best of the best tennis players. You would not see this technique being used in an everyday match. This fantasy technique had appeared in front of his eyes. Also, it was delivered by a teenager of 17 or 18. Coach Sue was dumbfounded. He even found it a little ridiculous. His face turned red out of embarrassment. He had thought this kid was a total newbie earlier. Now that he saw him serve, he found that the kid was a scarily powerful player. What? Twist serve. Coach Sue's cry sent the whole tennis court in an uproar. How is that possible? Isn't the kid a newbie? How does he know such a super advanced technique? Did someone say he's a newbie? Have you ever seen such a powerful newbie? What the hell? How old is this kid again? How can he be so powerful? This isn't a F asterisk King comic book. The atmosphere became tenser and tenser. Wu Xiaoma and the others stood on the spot. Her petite mouth was stretched into a big O shape and did not close for a long while. Oh my god, a twist serve. Is he a monster? Xiaomi, why didn't you say that he was an expert player? Wu Xiaoma complained. Qin Xiaomi was dumbfounded and did not know what to say. Meanwhile, Fu Renjie was lying face up on the ground. He was clutching onto his jaw while his face was blank. At this moment, he could not think of anything, and he could not believe the earlier scene that happened. Twist serve. No, that's impossible. He's a total newbie, isn't it? How does he know such a technique? Right, it must be a coincidence. He pushed himself off the ground. His eyes were bulging and his expression was contorted. Again. He roared. He picked up the ball and threw it across the net. I don't believe that you can pull it off one more time. He mumbled hatefully through gritted teeth. Tang Hao picked up the ball and stood at the serving position. He tossed the ball into the air again, then swung his racket fiercely. Thwack. A crisp detonation. The ball flew across the net once again, its speed and intensity like a cannonball. It struck heavily on the ground. The ball spun at an incredible speed. It bounced off the ground, then flew toward Fu Renjie. 
Though Fu Renxia could see the ball coming, he could not dodge the ball in time and was hit on the cheek. He cried out in pain, then fell once again. Whoa! The crowd roared again. Another blow. Oh my god. He's a real pro. The crowd was excited, and some were close to fanatic. Their gazes toward the boy were not condescending anymore, but were replaced with total admiration. Some girls even squealed with excitement. In their eyes, this boy dressed in a plain white buttoned down shirt was so cool and charming. Qin Xiangyi was spellbound. Something occasionally flashed in her eyes. Cough cough. Fu Renjie stood up while pressing his cheek. His face became more contorted. How could this be, he trembled. In his heart, he could not come to terms with the fact that this country bumpkin, this poor loser, this kid of a lower social class could be a pro of this caliber. I don't believe it. Again. He roared, almost close to hysterics. Thwack. Another explosive detonation. The ball whizzed past the net, and when it hit the ground, spun wildly, then bounced straight at him. Fu Renjie's eyes were wide open to look at the trajectory of the ball. He knew when to dodge, but still failed to dodge in time. He was hit by the ball once again, this time knocking out a front tooth. I don't believe it. He roared. Thwack. Another ball flew past the net and bounced. This time, it struck him in the face. His nose was crooked and his glasses flew away. He felt dizzy in the head as he stumbled a few backward steps. He felt weak in his feet and fell kneeling. His face was as pale as a sheet, as though someone sucked the soul out of his body. His face was terribly swollen. It was a pathetic sight. Qian Wei and the others were already shivering with fear. Each of their breaths sucked in cold air. Their gazes toward Tang Hao were of pure fear. This kid to them was a monster in human form. He had only served several balls and had utterly defeated his opponent. Shall we continue? Tang Hao said coldly without any expression on his face. Fu Renjia coughed violently. He struggled off the ground, stumbled a few steps, then fell once again. Don't. Don't continue. There'll be casualties if you push on. Coach Su shouted urgently. Tang Hao gave him a side eye, then turned to look at Qian Wei and the other men. Now it's your turn. Qian Wei shuddered. He almost pissed his pants. No, no, no. Tang. Brother Tang, we, well, don't mind us. You're a great player. We surrender. Qian Wei's voice was trembling. Tang Hao frowned and said coldly. Are you a real man? Right. Qian Wei, didn't you say earlier, you should accept the challenge if you're a real man? Don't tell me you're not. Wu Xiaomao laughed and shouted excitedly. I, Qian Wei looked like he was on the verge of tears. At that moment, he found that taunting the kid was the worst mistake in his entire life. This was like digging a grave then jumping into it. Hey. Are you a real man? You're a coward. The crowd around him also shouted. Qian Wei walked miserably and reluctantly onto the court. I'll serve this time. All right. Tang Hao said nonchalantly. Qian Wei breathed a sigh of relief. The kid did not seem as scary without that horrific twist serve. He calmed himself down as he picked up the ball. He took a deep breath, tossed the ball then served it with a powerful show. Tang Hao narrowed his eyes. When the ball was struck, he had clearly discerned the future trajectory of this ball. He shifted his feet and reached his intended destination. Bam! An explosive detonation. The ball flew as fast as lightning across the net and struck violently on the ground. Then, under Qian Wei's fearful eyes, it bounced off the ground and flew directly at his face. F asterisk CK, this is the end of me. That was his single thought right before he fell.